very special. We have Professor Ababao uh, Ayelo. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. The Hilton Hotel, the Dashing Culture Club, the Mizagajo, Culture Toklai, the Ethiopian iconography in Masarat Vamarak, Saint and Symbols, the Milleres Batazagajo, the Yit Mataklai, the Dat Professor Awayale, the Botholet Vinto, the Kamabra Rasato. A renowned scholar, authority, and authority on Ethiopian iconography. And how honored we are to have you here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Esther. I would like to thank uh, Cactus Ethiopia for uh, organizing this. It's uh, a pleasure and a privilege for me to talk about uh, a few things about Ethiopian iconography. Iconography, we find it in most of the Christian world. Iconography in Ethiopia, uh, it started as early as uh, the fourth century. There is nothing that survived from that time. So the earliest we find are from the seventh century. We find them only in three mediums. One is manuscript illumination, and then the other medium is wood uh, uh, panel. So this is a, a common medium of iconography. And then the other medium is wall painting, murals. So Ethiopian iconographers or painters used only four colors. Uh, red, green, yellow, and blue. The explanation that I get from uh, interviews and oral traditions is that these colors are the most visible colors in the rainbow. So they are considered as divine colors. What makes Ethiopian painting unique, uh, unique is its two-dimensionality. So we call that planar presentation. It's like a plane. The other is perspective. The only perspective that they used is ideal perspective. When they use ideal perspective, they uh, intentionally did not uh, want to create a sense of you know, uh, perspective to the eye, rather to express numbers. The other is background. For the Ethiopians, background is not necessary. The background is always filled with either one color or alternating colors. What is important is the subject matter, not related things. Another characteristic is formal stasis. Only we find movement where the subject matter are lost, like equestrian saints. Uh, movement is just indicated by the feet or by the rendering of the uh, iris of the eye. So the face, the human face, is rendered in three types only. So frontal and three-fourths is for holy personalities, angels, Christ, uh, and then good people, good figures. Profile is for uh, an evil personality, a bad personality. We don't find any other kind of representation of the face at all. Another thing associated with the uh, face is the eye is always exaggerated. So the eye is an important thing because a Christian person looks at the painting and the painting must look back to the observer. So that's what we call gaze reversal. A person with a profile rendering cannot make a gaze, uh, gaze reversal. The wall painted from uh, bottom to top. Wherever you look, you see a saint, you see a painting. So that is to create the feeling of fear and wonder. And you can uh, combine the visual hypnotism with the uh, hypnotism created by the liturgy, the choir. So that's the whole purpose. Then to say a few words about uh, the periodic styles, even though painting existed as early as the 7th century AD, we cannot talk 
about styles from uh, the 7th century to the 13th century because we don't have a source that allows us to uh, venture on you know, researching styles. So from the 13th century onwards, we know some of the styles. So the earliest style that we know is uh, the geometric or linear style. So what do they look like? So lines, geometric forms, they are everywhere in costume, in void spaces, and many of them. And then the other, the uh, Stephanite style from the uh, 15th to the late 16th century. We call it uh, the Stephanite style because of uh, a monastic leader called Stephan. He was uh, the abbot of uh, one of the prominent uh, monasteries of uh, Eastern Tigray, Gundagundi. So he was uh, a leader of uh, a movement called Stephanites, Dekika uh, Stifa. The Stephanites, they used line and geometric forms excessively. Uh, late 15th century and early 16th century, there was uh, these two monastic groups, the Stephanites on the one hand, and those who are on the side of the king, Zara Yaakov. So Zara Yaakov himself was a monk. One of the issues that uh, became controversial was that should the icon of the Virgin Mary be beautiful or not? So Zara Yaakov's argument is that it should be beautiful because she is beautiful. The argument of the Stephanites is that nobody has seen her. So here is a representation. Actually. So what makes it holy is not, not its beauty, rather its subject matter, its content. So that's why the Stephanites start to deform some forms. So that's why absolutely they focused on planar representation. On the other hand, uh, the Stephanites are challenged by Zarayakov the king. Zarayakov deliberately established a workshop at uh, Dabrabrahan, northern Shawa. So one of the famous uh, painters was Frezion, a monk and who was summoned by uh, Zara Yaakov, and then he became a court painter. So he made several paintings of the Virgin Mary, principally the Virgin with Child. So these paintings were distributed all across monasteries and churches in Ethiopia, particularly northern Ethiopia, where the Stephanites are. Zara Yaakov came up with the idea of uh, two things. Any Christian must bow for the cross and for the icon of the Virgin Mary. So this became mandatory. The Stephanites refused that. So the Stephanites said, okay, the Virgin is holy, but uh, she doesn't have such power, and we don't bow for the, Im the image of uh, the icon. So that's why such panels were made. Uh, we call it uh, the Frezion style, because Frezion was uh, the master of this kind of style. And then uh, first gone Rhine, this is from the early 17th century to the end of uh, the 17th century. First gone Rhine, it originated from Gondor and its surroundings, and that's why we call it the Gondorian style. So the human shape is very slender, you see, tall, elongated, parallel folds, and geometric decorative patterns in costume are its most uh, characteristics. So if you identify you know, parallel folds, you know, geometric forms, slender shapes, then a very uh, unique kind of chin. So that's second Gondrian. The second Gondrian style is the beginning of uh, secular images and themes, battle scenes, uh, and many other secular issues uh, started to appear. And then the last one, folk painting. So it's not like Christian iconography, this one is different. So following the victory of Adwa, the number of foreigners in Addis Ababa particularly, and in Ethiopia increased. The Europeans, they were interested in Ethiopian painting. So first they were interested in some 
religious teams. Then they started to commission different subject matters, local cultures, stories, uh, the way people lived, uh, costumes, ceremonies, festivals, the Battle of Magdala, the Battle of uh, Adwa. So such things mostly are commissioned by foreigners, not by Ethiopians. And then we find most of them outside Ethiopia. And then the last one, portraits. Portrait in Ethiopia started because of the introduction of photography. They take a picture, a photograph, and then they scale it up. And then also make improvements on uh, some physical uh, deformities. That became a fashion. So in such a way, portraits became one part of uh, the Ethiopian art uh, scene in the early 20th century. So thank you for your attention and then I took my time. Mahadar Kebara Udir Balalo, Bamoya Architect. Yazari was <laughs> Amtru Nabara, the iconography line of Barata Koro, Selezik, Tarik Hamat Atu, Turguamio, Katamirtena to Kabuzuna Groshle, and Nathro at Ambatronitania Carabo. Dina Berger Balalo, your cultural anthropology technology enthusiastic name. Yazari Seminar, Kabahaliga, but Amastok Unyal, painting wise, architecture wise. Uh, even uh, all days religion wise uh, uh, so my name is uh, Dr. Luba Tolbert. I'm a historian. Um, I come originally from Russia, so today's subject was very, very close to me because we have similar icons, we have similar tradition. So it was the same source but different uh, different branch of, of the same history. It was very, very interesting.